Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you so much for checking out another brand new episode of the show. Today's feature is returning guest, Tree One Four. Had a lot of fun catching up with the guys, talking about their brand new record, Exilorama. And uh, we get a little sneak peek on today's show. They got a big old release party happening on Saturday night at Hot Java. You're going to hear all about it on the show, but snag some tickets and join us Saturday at Hot Java. Ladies and gentlemen, it's officially beard season. With fall and no shave November right around the corner, this is prime time to grow a beard. And Roughneck Beard Company has you covered. Using a good beard oil from day one of growth sets the stage for a faster, fuller, and healthier growth. Avoid dry skin and the dreaded beard itch. Combine with rough neck genesis for the vitamin punch that really gets things moving. Stop in today or order online to build your kit and kick your growth into high gear. Shop 24-7 at roughneckbeardcompany.com. And use my code RPP15 for an exclusive 15% off your purchase. Uh, Or you can visit them in the Maplewood area locally and uh, visit the shop. Uh, Again, use that code RPP15 for 15% off all your favorite beard oils, beard balms, your junk powder. Or uh, they got their uh, beard batter back, one of my personal favorites. So check it all out, roughneckbeardcompany.com today. Also, a big shout out to my friends at Keith Brake Photography and KBP Studios. Super excited to have them a part of the show now. Uh, offering all kinds of great uh, rates over there with their uh, in the studio. You can come for yourself or bring the band in to get some nice promo shots. Um, if you mention Rock Paper Podcast at, during booking, uh, you can save yourself 10%. So that's a great deal. And a great way to support local business. Again, visit KeithBreakPhotography.com today and book yourself a session with Keith. Uh, I just had my first session over there and had a lot of fun getting to, you know, be a little silly, have him eat a little Debbie double-decker fudge round. And I uh, had a, this picture turned out real nice. So big thanks to Keith and his continued support of this show. And, uh, if you haven't uh, seen some of his other work, he's you know he had greats like Steve Ewing of The Urge, Learn from KC, uh, my buddy ATG from Discrepancies was in there recently. All kinds of uh, really nice pictures from Keith. So visit KeithBreakPhotography.com today and book yourself a session and mention Rock Paper Podcast for ten percent off. Uh, and. Uh, if you need me, of course, you can always find me at rockpaperpodcast.com, the socials. Uh, feel free to email me at rockpaperpodcast at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you all. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode with Tree One Four. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. We are Tree One Four, and, and you're, you're listening, listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. This is beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beats is the shame covers nonstop. Never know what new kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk. Country a hip hop jazz All kind of folks that he has Could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh On the Double deck of fudge round rolling round town Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero He's your hero, he's your bestie Rock Paper Podcast with Shane Presley Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out today with returning guest, 
Tree One Four. Welcome oh, back right, to the show, right. guys. We're sorry. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, want to properly introduce yourselves for those listening? No. No. Okay. Should well. we start here? Yeah. Let's okay. Go that way. All right. You. Uh, my name is Tim Italis. I play drums for True One Four. Yeah, Next. Nailed it. My name is Brad Milloway. I play guitar. <laughs> Some know me as uh, Brad Millibeats, and uh, I do guitar and turntable stuff, and uh, I do a little sing-songy sings, <laughs> sing songs. Just a little. And uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name's Peach, and I play the bull fiddle. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Well, I'm, uh, I'm super excited to be back here hanging with you guys. Mm. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, we are missing a couple of guys that didn't weren't able to be here tonight with us um well this and, is all you really need. right i mean right right i mean you're yeah. getting the meat and potatoes here yeah. right I, we got we got the good looking part of the band the wedding thank tangle you. of the thank band you. <laughs> thank you we, uh, we are missing uh joe and bongo jack now right yes yeah yes. bongo jack yeah. had car problems yeah tire blew up so yeah he's uh switching that out we should uh we should have him call in once he gets uh, to say we could do that. Safe, safe safe destination. Yeah. Yeah. Should we call him now or should we wait? We should wait. Okay. We should wait. Yeah. Just wait. We shouldn't call Joe though, because that'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> we should call uh, Joe. Joe could be here. He's not doing anything. He's just not here. All right. <laughs> uh but we uh we got a brand new record on uh, due out uh was it is actually is it officially released on the Friday before or the 11th. Oh, it's going to be September on the 11th? 11th okay. yeah. I didn't know if it was going to hit the uh, platforms and all the other stuff the uh, night before. The, the, the pre-order, pre-order's up. Okay. So you could but, pre-order it on, I think it's Apple Music and uh, Amazon, I think. And why then are you, you asking me? <laughs> uh, what What is it? Jim's Pool Room? You can pre-order the album there and yeah. the physical copy of it on jimspoolroom.com. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did that. So. I got a physical copy on the way did you really hell yep. yeah sweet mm, physical copy i gotta, I gotta right support on. the homies yeah right on. we appreciate um, them yeah. but yeah i'm excited man like i uh it's been a while since we've had some new tunage from the band uh, i know you guys uh put out a couple of singles and things over you know a while back but uh it's gonna it feels real good to have a a full release uh coming from you guys so you know what it, it feels good to us to have a full release yeah. too. it really does oh, yeah. because it's been a long time <laughs> well this we we but, went through a couple of different rhythm sections too so this has been it for i don't know yeah like, for like, this record though, right right this this record this what? record is the uh present lineup when did we start recording this record oh like fucking two like two years ago <laughs> so Waterfall, BC. waterfall skies was the first song <laughs> yeah yep yeah Okay, so that was definitely what two years ago, at least. Yeah, 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 somewhere around two. Yeah. So Maybe this record, uh, yeah, I mean we we just kind of took our time with it. You know, we recorded a song. We're like, well, we're let's, lazy. Let's release this one, and we did put it out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a and then uh, there's we a cracking like, video. People yeah, people have heard cracking. So we just kept going back in, recording, 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 and uh, we came up with the number twelve, which I think is a good record. Yeah, yeah. Is it, so is it twelve? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Twelve tracks. That's a full album. Okay. Yep, uh, I believe uh, it's called an LP. An LP, long yes. play, <laughs> which we should hopefully do on vinyl soon yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it's i know so it's expensive, expensive. yeah it's really it'd be really expensive. cool to have have, a vinyl, love to have a vinyl of, copy of this but yeah yeah that one gets the square head joe cover <laughs> oh for sure well and i think uh i don't know for sure i think but uh, from what i've heard um from some other friends that are waiting for vinyl that there's quite a bit of uh you know like a um, backlog that, yeah for a lot of the plants are trying to catch up from everything but uh yeah every so, everything's like yeah. that everything but yeah that would be killer man to have it out. yeah i'd i'd love to have it on vinyl man i really would yeah it'd be killer yeah i'd like that um but we uh so what we'll, we'll uh, we're talking about it and uh so the the record again september 11th exilorama right yep yeah uh, said that right so yeah, many, some record. of you listening might recognize that it's the old arcade at Crestwood Mall. Indeed. 
very nostalgic. Yeah. So spent a lot of time in that in that arcade back in my teenage days. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, it's, it's been around a long time. It's funny because I'm not from St. Louis. I'm from <laughs> Chicago. Right. Ew. I'm actually from Rockford. Gross. So, in okay, so it was in a mall, right? Yes. Exilorama. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. It was in the basement. So the, in the, food the, court. Ar- the arcade yeah. we went to was called Aladdin's Castle. I've that, heard not that nearly was... as cool sounding. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, if you got flying carpets and shit, that's awesome. <laughs> We have video games. But what shit did you have? Exilorama is a great name. Yeah. We had, uh, I, I spent, you know, because the closest mall to me, I was li- out in Wentzville. The closest one was Mid Rivers Mall. Um, and we had Tilt. So uh, uh, yeah. not nearly as cool as Exilorama. <laughs> Tilt's a little better than Aladdin's carpet. Or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aladdin's Castle. Aladdin's Whatever. Aladdin's Taint. Whatever. <laughs> But uh, I, uh, man, I just like, you know, with watching like uh, Stranger Things and, you know, some mm. of the different uh, things of that era, like, uh, you know, I'm definitely was like total nostalgia for video games and arcades and stuff recently. And like, uh, I dug out my N64 a little while back and went Ooh, back and yeah. uh, golden eye action. Yeah, man, for yeah. sure. But, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, it's just fun to like. You go right back to those days when you're a kid <laughs> yeah. playing those games and stuff. So, um, I, I remember going to arcades and playing Defender and putting a quarter in. Right. You remember going to arcades where all you arcades. did was stand in a big room and throw sticks at each other? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't sticks. It was quarters. Sticks and, you, and rocks. You put the quarter up on the monitor. They had the dodge you dinosaurs, up, right? Okay. You guys don't remember that? No, no. Going no, to an arcade. So you'd shove a quarter in there, and you'd play a round of Defender or Pac-Man or yeah, right. whatever, Asteroids. Um, but you put your quarter up on the screen because you got next up. So when the dude playing loses, I got next game. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. I remember yeah, that. That's the old Just, arcade, that, That's man. what they did in pool rooms. Yes, the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but they did it, With less they, they did it in arcades, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, I was honestly too you, cheap. You millennials arcades. don't know. I, I'd throw like no, a no. buck or two in know. and be mad. I could have bought an action figure with that, <laughs> you know. Like so, I, 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 I would get a video game for home yeah. that was a better use of my money because you could play it as many times as you wanted. Uh, where, whereas the arcade, you know, like bam, you know, you you ten minutes deep and like that was a GI Joe guy right there. Yeah. That could have been yeah. job of the hut. I've been here an hour. I could have had a Millennium Falcon. Yeah, when I was a kid, we had no, uh, we had the Atari twenty six hundred. I had. And, I still have one, but it was in my and, attic. It doesn't and the, work. In television, in te- I remember that one. Yeah, and the Coleco. <laughs> yep. Yep. What did you have, Brad? A- Activision. I, what? <laughs> Brad started out with like PS one. No, it was Sega. 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 Oh, Sega. I remember right. Sega. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was Sega. Yeah. Sweet. You ever play um, uh, what was it called? Syndicate Wars on Sega. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, three quarter scroller where you like built like a little four man uh, hit squad, but it was cyberpunk. So you like you decked them out with uh, uh, bionics and shit. Great game. No, no, not at Great all. Great game. Was, so anyway, was, Shane, was it? <laughs> <laughs> was it Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat. Oh, Mortal yeah. Kombat. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That, uh, Street Fighter. New movie was pretty legit, actually. For Hadouk. I liked it. Everybody that I know that was into that stuff was mad as hell. Yeah. And that movie's so much better than the first one. Oh, yeah. I still like the first one. Yeah. I, I like that's fine. You know, like He's when I saw the Kombat? first one at the yeah. theater, it was at that theater by Union Station, and the film melted. <laughs> and we didn't get to, like, right as they were setting up oh, the climax really? of the movie, and they were like, here's free tickets. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I never. I still haven't seen the end of that movie. That new one, though, fuck the the fatalities. Right. Oh my god, the new one was totally better. Yeah, I like uh, I liked it a lot. Like I mean, for what it was, you know, I knew it wasn't going to be some kind of uh, Oscar worthy. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> Oscar worthy, you know, performance or something like that or whatever. Right. But, you're not you're not watching Mortal yeah. Kombat for great <laughs> acting. You're watching it for fight scenes and yeah. fatalities. Yep. And I thought I did a good job with it. Um, I always liked the the lore that goes with the uh, Mortal Kombat, like 
the storytelling of it all and stuff. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah, the backstories. Right. Yeah. So that's why I always it was cool. Liu Kang, man, that was my guy. That was when I played it. That was my character every time. I just like that last scene where it was like Sub Zero and Scorpion, and they're fighting <laughs> yeah. in the MMA gym or whatever. That yeah, yeah, badass dude. Yep. Uh, so why uh, Exilorama? I mean, just because of that that you guys had a lot of time fun in there, or what was? I it? think it just popped up in conversation. Yeah, we were just talking like, about spontaneously. it spontaneously. And uh, I was like, we were like, what should we call this record? I, I, and I'm you pretty guys, sure. I'm pretty Joe sure was, it was it was really you and Joe. I'm and, pretty sure and it was you. Brad's idea. We should do this, and we were all like, oh man, I remember that place. <laughs> was that right around the time we wrote Boss Level? I think so. I think yeah. it was. Yeah, but we were just which we isn't on this record. About... That's that's one that's coming right. Down the, right. It, down it's the, pipe, uh, the bones are, are in the studio, but we haven't finished it yet. But like, it's it's literally an instrumental song. Where we were just a trying video to like, game fight. like, what kind of music do you want to hear during the boss fight? So it's like boss fight, back off, boss fight, back off. And I think that's when Brad was like, "Hey, we should call the record Exilorama." Mm. And I was like, "Cool, what's that?" Yeah. <laughs> well, that's I cool about it. You don't, right? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Unless you know, you don't, you know. If you don't right. know, you don't. If know. If you're not from a cool I city, you're just a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Aladdin's fucking castle. <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> Uh, you know when what? you were a little kid, you should have went there and been like, I demand something better. Yeah. Ladden's <laughs> Castle. Our town looks like jerks. It was Cherryville Mall, man. <laughs> Cherryville Mall. Uh, that doesn't cool even spot. sound right. <laughs> that sounds like the setting of a I grew up movie. in Byron, Illinois, which is a small town in northern Illinois, right outside of Rockford. And we had two arcades in a 1,200 capacity population town. Two arcades. That's a lot of arcades for that small. It was the eighties. I'm surprised he had bathrooms. We had running water. (laughs) Running water. Bullshit. I demand (laughs) proof. Uh, So yeah, that's where the name came from. (laughs) Oh yeah, (laughs) we're in a band, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's give them a little uh, (laughs) sneak peek uh, of what you might hear on this record, and uh, we. well, we decided to share the letter, right? Yeah, yeah. This is yeah, uh, sure. this closes out the record, but I thought it was an interesting choice because this is a, a cover song. Yes, uh, which uh, I guess uh, made famous mostly by Joe Cocker, right? Right, made right. famous by Joe <laughs> Cocker. We're, we're playing yeah. a our cover of his cover, his cover of yeah, somebody else's song. It, yeah. right. somebody so we're like two song, covers yeah. deep, three like, right. like, like the the letter cubed. <laughs>
But uh, no, just a killer tune, man. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a great song, and uh, it was fun to hear your guys' take on it for sure. Getting thank you, getting a little funky with it and having some fun. Yeah, yeah, I like this song, man. I think this this is one of my favorite songs off the record. To be honest, the production's great, and uh, I think the take on is great too, man. I mean, not to be too, uh, you know, but yeah, <laughs> that means. <laughs> <laughs> I snorted. Uh, so yeah. we should probably play that song. Yeah, we 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 did we did. Sweet. Yeah, that's the pop. That's the. <laughs> I love her take on it. I I wanted to say like it's Tim's fault. Like what? What we, the fuck did I do? No, no. We we tried to jam that song like two or three times, and it was fucking abysmal. Like it was like, oh my god! I just wanted to sell my shit at the pawn shop and quit. And Tim goes, why don't we just put a reggae beat behind it? Yeah, and like well, two yeah. jams into that, we're like, okay, song's done. <laughs> you know, we just Tim wrote put a reggae itself. beat, and the whole thing just fell into place. Well, I think the changes are weird because it always it teases the chorus through the whole song. Yeah, because you want to go to the chorus. I know, and but, then it's like, oh, it not yet, not yet. Yep. And then it's like, there's two of them in there, but there should be like but five. When, dude, if you go back and listen to the Cocker arrangement, yeah, it's the same fucking arrangement. No shit. It's exactly the same. Yes, it's exactly the same. We just we put like reggae and dance hall. It's basically reggae and dance hall. Yeah, that's that's what we're going back and forth between. But yeah, yeah it's it's totally just all reggae and dance hall. But it's the same fucking arrangement, man. I same like, exact arrangement. I like that Paul waited till he got off the microphone to go, <laughs> go <laughs> do all the talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Except for maybe the uh, the acapella part. Yeah, the acapella part's good. That's yeah. that's the only place we really take liberty with your arrangement. But other other than that, man, it's pretty much fucking the same song. Right. Yeah. It's just a different uh, different rhythm. What do you guys like? Well, I, I just thought it was interesting. Again, it's a great song that I've known you know for years and years, obviously. Uh, but like. It's also interesting to hear you guys do it because you guys don't do a lot of cover stuff. You guys, no, we, we throw them in every now and then for yeah. our live live sets, but right, it's we, we try put, not to if we don't have to. Usually, sure. if we have to fill a lot of time. We'll, we'll, well throw yeah. a couple in there. Yeah, and we pick and choose. If you're doing a, a you know a long night at Oyster Bar or whatever, we're throwing some crowd favorites and yeah, yeah, I get that. So we did like the three hour gigs for a while, and it just. <clears throat> It's so much work. <laughs> it's draining, man. It's, you know once what? Once you get to that third set, you're I just like, I actually enjoy this. But it's only because I learned how to doing the shitty cover band work, where you just got to get used to playing those three one hour sets. Spend your half hour breaks out there, you know, relaxing. Yeah. Uh, and just play fucking Journey like you give a shit about fucking Journey, you know? <laughs> well, we don't play any Journey. Shout out uh, to Journey, you know. Back yeah. to my point, we pick and choose what we want to do for covers. Yeah, you have to. You can't yeah. just play covers. You've got to like reinterpret and uh, own a song. Yeah. Even even just repeating a song note for note fairly well doesn't doesn't work. Like there, there's an actual whole different set of skills required to do good cover band work. Well, you could put a meatloaf in the <laughs> oven, but that don't make you a chef. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You gotta you be gotta really know, good at being a cover you, band. You know, stick your really head up good a bowl's at rewriting ass. and reinterpreting the song. <laughs> you gotta be able to throw some spice on that mug. Yes. And so you know, when you it, mix the ketchup together the, with the, the brown sugar the and the mustard the and then you whip that shit on the top. Steak. But I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Xander, there's a big difference between our version of a letter 
and our version of that Tom Petty tune that we play where none of us plays anything bad, but it ain't a great song. We don't sound mm. great playing it. But nobody's uh, doing know. anything wrong. We just don't vibe. We'll that have to song. agree to disagree there. Well, I, you're the, you don't vibe. You're one out of five, baby, because none of us like playing that mm. song because uh-huh. it doesn't work. It's a crowd pleaser. So It, it is. It is. Uh, I'm not saying people don't like to hear it. I'm just saying we don't sound good playing it. That's we sound you, good enough. You can say that for, a for yourself. I, that's fine. And that's when the band broke up. <laughs> Pretty much. That's when when Brad completely detached from reality and started mm. getting weird. Mm. Uh well, you uh, you can come out to. Uh, we need to make it funkier so we can all lock in and do something. You can't. We're not. We're not. Are we going? Yeah, we're going. Yeah, we've have been, we been going this whole time. Yeah. God damn it! Yeah, <laughs> we're being a jerk. Well, Gosh, the whole time you were talking off mic over here about uh, everything. The meatloaf. <laughs> yeah. The meatloaf. Really? Yeah. When I was taking a leak, that ah, was where we were going. The meatloaf. We, got it. we yeah. mic'd up the toilet for you, man. We did. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, you can come out and pick up a copy of Exilarama on September 11th, Saturday night, at Hot Java uh, in the Grove. And uh, it's a good big record release party, man. We're, it's going to be a wild night. Uh, obviously, uh, Tree 1 4 playing. Uh, well, yeah, I'm guessing you guys are probably going to be playing most of the record, right? Or are you going to be playing some of the new? I think we should play the whole yeah, record. I think, I think we're still record. arguing about it. Yeah. No, I yeah. think we none, should, none of us just, no. just play like, the whole record. They're going to take it home and hear it. I know, but give them a preview. Give them live. Well, we got give some, them a preview. We got some, of the next some room to groove in there, so we'll probably play yeah. the record and then some. Um, you know, we got Steve Steve Ewing. We yeah. got Hostine and the Aztecs, and uh, DJ Dub Pen, the ones and twos in between. Yeah, it's so J D P baby. And if anybody Hot Java is super cool. I don't know if you've been in there yet, but I have not, no. Oh, it's awesome. The old it's the old ready the room. The old ready right. room. Yeah. Uh but they put this giant screen, like this giant H D like four K screen that's the whole back wall behind the stage. And it looks yeah, is that amazing. House? That's it actually what? there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, they put it in themselves. That owner was like, I bought this sweet club. Uh, here's what we're missing. And he I mean, it's just it's a it's the biggest high def screen I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Yeah, yeah it's and huge. They were they were testing it while we were down there hanging out with that dude. It's huge. And it looks I mean, it just it's amazing. Right. Yeah, it's I'm gonna ex- look so cool. I'm excited to check it out, man. Uh but yeah, so uh, tickets available now, right? Yes. Yeah. However, <laughs> however, the club does it. Yeah. Have we ever had tickets available? I'm now? pretty sure. Just get them at the door. Look, yeah. you got to yeah. be able to go to. Just get them uh, at the door. You got to be able to go to hotjava.com or something. There's right. got. They got to be somewhere. All right. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's, it's, just, it's crazy it's 10, that you ask that. Cover. None of us even have ten dollar cover to get in. Yeah, yeah, just come down. Yeah, yeah just. Okay. Show up, yeah. We're not, yeah. We're not. I'm really sure they like, just let you in until they get to the number that the fire marshal says you can't let anybody else in. I hope that's what that we number, do. man. Yeah, man. I uh, yeah, I haven't been in that room in a long time, so I'm uh, I'm looking forward. It's a to good that. room, actually. It sounds yeah. good in there. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, I've been in a lot of good shows in there. I have not uh, not a hot Java yet, but I've been in that space though, and like. Uh, so definitely some good memories in that room, and I'm excited to make some new ones. So, oh yeah, it's gonna be cool, man. So the stage is in the same spot. Yeah, yeah. it's all the yeah. it's, it's the same. It's, everything it's is the same. same. Yeah, everything so, is the same. Yeah, the acoustics and everything. The, dude, dude, it's, mm-hmm. it's all those sweet be there. murals are still there. They didn't they didn't change the artwork or anything. Like right. it's they just put that. Yeah, I like that room. Big man. ass sweet screen room. in there. It's, it's a grove then, too. It's happening. You know. Yeah. Yes. And then they yes. like uh, and there's something like they kind of. Linked patios or something like yeah. that. Yeah, like, they they, uh, they own the bar next door too. So there's a door oh, you can do go they? out, and there's like a whole patio, and there's an extra oh, bar, and you can get food. Like, yeah. So yeah, you can go over the what tiki bar, the right? Tiki bar. Yeah. Yep. Nice man. That's cool. Um, and then uh, we'll have physical copies on hand for the night, right? Well, yes, we yes. will. Take, right take there ones. in that box, right Boom. over there, sir. Right there, and yep. some new stickers and all kinds of uh, merch. So. Are we going to have shirts? We will. 
We got shirts on yep. the way too. Yep. Very cool. But uh, yeah, man, this is uh, it's gonna be a big night for sure. Definitely. So get out and celebrate and some live local music coming out of St. Louis here, man. Uh, well, let's throw in another tune. Uh, let's play an original this time. Which, uh, what did we? We were kind of going back. We threw a bunch of names I don't know. out there. What which, do you like? Which one we? Uh, <laughs> which one what, do you want to hear? Let's, well, let's none do, of them. How about a he Brad? Hates them all. How about a Brad song? Okay. okay. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Crossroads. Let's play Crossroads. Let's do Crossroads. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is a Bone Thugs and Cover, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding about that. This is, uh, <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Bum, 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 bum. Go there. Okay. Remember when we played that Eric Clapton Crossroads cover at those gigs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, is this one mine or is that yours? No. Uh, I, 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 I finished this one. I think one. that one's mine. Yeah. Uh, I'll take Do we have any more? Or we yeah, there, and there's yeah. another 12 in the fridge. Pro- brought I, to br- you. I bred enough so we'd have enough. This episode. No, week. we always got Bush Wednesday. Beer. This episode is brought to you by Bush Beer. Bush Beer. Bush. Beer. Bush. Bush. Heads for the mountain. This episode is brought to you by. Remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Head for the Mountain? I'm just saying, like, the four no, people that are going to get that joke are going to love it. <laughs> the four people that get Head for the Mountains are going to love it. Head for Well, the four people that are still alive that remember the commercials that had Head in the Mountains. The, in them, like really, like here's one, right? I'm just saying, people that are 102 <laughs> totally remember that commercial. I like that you guys think that four people are listening to this show still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Well. Now, now there, there's seven. There's seven. I checked, and they're all mad as hell. They're not going to take anymore. Nope. Uh, <laughs> all right, Brad, tell us about uh, Crossroads. All right, what do you want to know? Um. Is what? It, <laughs> I don't know. Is what? Uh, what? Where does this song? Is this? Is, did you start with just t- t- you and tell, acoustic guitar? It started, exactly it, it started with me. It started me and an acoustic guitar, and uh, it's kind of about some you know just tough times in my life in my right. early years. So you know, yeah. it's about. I guess don't, uh, don't, don't say it. Don't say it. You know, just some stuff. Yeah.
Well, how's like, now, now, I don't know, I'm sure we've probably talked about a little bit about it, but do you guys like, now you have the song, are, are, do you like play it for the group and you guys all kind of start adding to it or how, what's like, a, or Some, do you already have like the vision of how you want this thing to go? So sometimes I'll bring a riff in and we'll just jam that and then we'll write lyrics to it. Other times, you know, I'll have like a complete composed song. It's been a while, but it's, you know, now, the ideal that, way to do it. You've done that recently. Yeah. Uh, pill bottles. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff that we've started recording for the next album. Right. Uh, Brad has brought in like really fully developed. Sometimes yeah, we, we just wrote our parts Sometimes for we it. dissect it and put it back together. And sometimes Brad will come in with a song just like, here it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Some, and yeah, sometimes it's good. just a riff. It you know? It's just a riff and we just jam a riff while we're just hanging out and having fun and Oh, like okay, we got nine parts. Let's strip it back to four, and it's a song. Yeah, the, the songwriting oh, yeah. process is it's extremely just, chaotic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, but it's organic, and that's really important. it is organic. Yes, yeah, yeah. I can. Uh, oh, uh, Joe writes songs too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Yes, he does stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. I had uh, I had old Joe on my singer songwriter storytelling showcase mm. a while back with Brad. So I was there. I know he I was does. really nervous. Yeah, I didn't know what to do with my hands. Right, <laughs> <laughs> it was very nervous. Yeah, it was a good time though. I had a good time. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, it was a little a little light. The weather kind of messed with us, but yeah, well, we still had a lot of fun recording that night and. Yeah, it was a good time. Um, yeah, man. But uh, yeah, I, I do. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Joe. I've actually n- known uh, Joe probably the longest uh, of all you guys. So he's uh, very Joe easy. has, dude. Joe has a fantastic voice, man. Yeah, he does. I mean, his voice is like it's so. Uh, it's like butter, it's, like yeah. the good kind that and you it's can really spread recognizable. On toast. Like. <laughs> <laughs> It's like parquet or something. Yeah, Here's me trying like, to get technical and real. You know, but yeah, yeah. Right. Joe definitely has a uh, uh, really recognizable a voice. voice. Yes, a voice. Like when he sings, a voice comes out. <laughs> Which we get to hear uh, a nice little uh, falsetto on this record uh, from Joe, which I thought was it was into. I mean, the whole song is. Uh, on waterfall, water, waterfall yeah. skies. Yeah. Joe like, really stretches legs on that. Yeah, I made him do it. Yeah. But it was like I really literally. Did. He didn't want to like, do it. I was like, we're like, he's like, his family. Like, Dude, go for the falsetto, man. All right. That was cool. It was cool though because like it was something. Uh, it, it definitely is like kind of a, um, I would say like a standalone track on the record. That kind of, I uh, just outside of what you would kind of expect from Tree One Four. I feel like mm-hmm. it was, um, you know, a little more on the uh, smoother. You know, we're very like, emotional. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was, when we want to be yeah. We right, can, right. yeah we can be just it, insult us it was you, like, you'll see like super emotional right? super emotional it was like kind of, it's like no you know chill. it was like when you like uh we're gonna slow it down for a moment here but right. you know like in uh and uh yeah, it's kind of like yeah. that's a slow jam on the record for sure so that's the song that like you know like i was saying when i listened to it I just like to imagine Joe on an old-fashioned steamboat. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the Mark Twain He's thing like going oiled on. Oiled up yeah. in the sun with the glistening abs. Is that really abs. what you see? That's what yeah. I see. Is that He's just vision? strolling down the, the old Mississippi, <laughs> just on the big old steamboat. <laughs> sure um, is a fine day out today, you know. The, on the River to Pear. Yeah. Just Huckleberry <laughs> Joe. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, you no. need to make a Huckleberry Square Joe. I already yeah. started the straw it, hat of the bar. I'm already working. Yeah, way, way <laughs> Square head Twain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going south now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> south is where everybody wants you to Twain, take it. Huckleberry Twain, that's kind of funny. Yeah, it's pretty good. Square head. Yeah. Twain. I do. Uh, I do love. The uh, the square head. I like the um, when Brad did all the voices of all all the <laughs> <Yeah>. band. <laughs> well, it's hard to get everyone together, so I just, you just have to improvise. Oh, right. We love so that. You have to do everyone's my, voice. My favorite. It was the uh, 
right <laughs> before COVID, don't where you did the Broadway it. Oyster Bar one, and you did the square head Joe voice with the uh, the New the, Zealand the Aussie, accent. The Aussie, yeah, yeah. yeah. square well, head Joe here. <laughs> the coolest thing you ever made. That that whole video was gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, and then, that, and then COVID happened. That impersonation is a little hard to uh, sustain for a long period of time. <laughs> no, I, I just, I'm just saying, that's a proud moment in your square head Joe life. Yeah, I don't know why everybody it was from New likes that one. Everybody, well, it just, well, I mean, like, why wouldn't he be? All right, sure. why not? Yeah. <laughs> yep. When you got, when you know, sometimes they you just got to run with them, man. These these ideas come out, and you just, you know, they. Write well, themselves. You know? So I've recently started making fun of Bongo Jack pretty good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where his cartoon is, oh. is just bing bong, bing bong, ba bong. <laughs> I am Bongo Jack. And uh, I think that's Wait, pretty Jack's neat. Jack's here? That was him. Oh, man. That was him. He just yeah. walked he made in. It. Like, when, when he plays stuff, like he, he's, he's got buttons and keyboards and and drums there were, those are his drums right there and no matter what he does it's just bing bong bing bong bing bong yeah. in the background <laughs> that's why but it's great bing bongs right one of the best bing bongs ever mm-hmm. it's fantastic bing bong <laughs> high level bing bongs very sure. high level bing I've, bong. I've often said this band was missing bing bongs and uh, you guys you know, got we it brought and, them in yeah we didn't know album, yeah. we didn't know until we had bing bongs how much we needed bing bongs in the band yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> he yeah. does add a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna say he does. I don't need. I'm gonna back you up, lot. Jack. No, no, like I, literally. I know you're like, gonna listen like, to this. No, no, I'm no. telling you right now. Jack yeah. is the busiest guy in the band. Yeah, he does. man. He it, he's like the glue at this point. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Without Jack, we we would all just stab each other simultaneously <laughs> in a circle, uh, like a yeah. sacrifice. <sighs> No, kind of, no, yeah. Uh, Each to our individual uh, uh, gods, but okay. in a way that would not appease any of them. All right. Uh, we would all just disgrace ourselves. Okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Jack. He's a very talented man. Um, J- Jack's awesome. Yeah. And, and if you get a chance, check out the whole like uh, Bongo Jack versus the Loot Machine stuff. Yeah, he's a busy oh, yeah. guy. And you've man. got the, uh, what's the other one where, where he performs with Lana? Uh, uh and it's it's the, uh, the dub band no um, no not well that the, the dub band too hoopy yeah. loopy hoopy loopy that's what yeah. i was going yeah. for yeah when they go out and perform together and that's real fun yep he's yep. a busy dude jack's got a lot of shit going on support some jack yep we're gonna have any of that going on at uh at the release party any kind of oh, i'm sure we'll have some hula hoops going some visual well, spectacles yeah there'll be something yeah Along with that massive LED wall behind you guys. Oh yep. my god! Yeah, yep. Dude, that thing looks so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you don't understand when you see it, you're gonna be like, "Holy shit!" It's pretty phenomenal. It's not like, "Oh wow, that sounds really neat." No, it's like when that thing's going and the guy's got the the visuals. You just yeah, like, wow. Yeah. I wanted to play Halo on it real bad. Right. Oh my god! <laughs> I didn't even real think about bad. that. <laughs> well, you mentioned uh, their names. We really didn't dive into. Uh, some of the support for this show, but uh, you were you invited along Steve Ewing, yes, uh, yes. who's a great friend of this show, and you guys have uh, become great buddies with him as well. Seems we, like we love us some Steve. Yeah. He's a super cool guy. Um, you know, you guys. Uh, when well, he opened the last release party, right? Yep. Did he? Yep. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And we played a couple tunes with him at that that party. Yes, we did uh, Broadway Oyster Bar again. Yeah, we'll play with him. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the coolest, man. He's uh, just a great dude, for sure. Like, I mean, he's been super supportive of this show from since the very beginning, and and um, I, you know, I talk about him a lot, like how much he means to me, and how much, like, you know, he gave me my uh, opportunity to book my first show I ever booked, you know, put together and stuff, and Neat. over at Steve's Hot Dogs, and then like I'm putting a lineup together, and Steve's like, I'll play, and I'm like, okay. You know, nice. I'm like, you know, of course, uh, you know, the very first show I throw and Steve Ewing's on it. I'm like, all right, this is going to be cool. So it really, uh, really feels good to have a guy like that, that, you know, believes in what you're doing and stuff and, and wants to support yeah, in every way. Cool. So definitely you get- yeah, like, like seriously, anybody, anybody, 
You ever heard a bad Steve Ewing story? Right. Like, you ever seen Steve Ewing kick a puppy? <laughs> no. <laughs> Steve Ewing, he's nine years behind on his taxes? <laughs> Never. There's no bad Steve Ewing yeah. stories. He's just, I've met that dude, like, multiple times in the last, like, 20 years. In instances, a lot of the time, where there's zero chance he remembers me. Just like just bumping into him in some random spot backstage at a show, just whatever. And that dude is just just a super nice guy. Like yeah. his nice button is cranked to ten <laughs> all the time. And I don't know how he does it. Like you know, between music, the hot dog shop, uh, you know, Mr. America competitions. He's, like that. he's gotta be a busy dude yeah. for sure. He's, yeah. I need know. some tips. And he's making it to hey. like soccer practices and stuff and like He's everywhere, man. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I just saw those guys. I saw the Urge throw down at uh, St. Louis Music Park, and, and that, was real, was that was a real good night. Yeah, so yeah, I, I saw. Yep, yeah, 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 man, that, that was a fun <laughs> yeah. night. And and he pretended not to know who you right. were. <laughs> Ew, good shit. <laughs> oh, there's that guy. Ooh. Oh, that oh. guy. <laughs> Pretend it's a homeless guy when we walk oh. by. I don't know this guy. I don't have any money. <laughs> no, we, nothing. Uh, I want nothing. There was, there was a woman brace. Uh, we have a big hug, and it was nice. Yeah, it was <laughs> cool, man. It was cool. <laughs> that was a good show, though, yeah. right? Yeah, I, I had a good time that night, man. It was fun. So, what? okay, so Local H came out first. Yeah, those guys came out. And you out. saw them, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so did you get, like, you a little it. angst from them? Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, like when, I when you met them or when they played? No, 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 no. I'm. I, they were like, uh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like I, they came out and they were jamming. Yeah, and right. Like there weren't that many people there yet, and right. they were kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know. I I kind of got a weird vibe from them. Well, the whole thing, wow. honestly, was kind of strange. Like, um. Well, I uh <laughs> no like I mean it was a great night out like I loved local H but I really thought it was strange that you go, you went from like local H like getting rowdy you know and then like play and Soul Asylum came on in the middle yeah and it was like a very different energy change you know like I like Soul Asylum a lot but for the show it was just like real low energy and then the urge comes out and has to like and it was like a yeah. bomb went yeah. off right. <laughs> So it was like, literally, you know yeah, what I mean? Right, right, right. Every urd show is like a bomb yeah. went off. Like I, 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 I mean, yeah. More but... than twenty years ago, I worked at Mississippi Nights briefly, and I worked one of those point point uh, sponsored uh, urge Christmas things. You know, where you had like the two days, like you played the twenty third, twenty fourth, and the twenty sixth. You know, and they get the one day off, and like all sell out shows, and like yeah, it's. When they play, it was it was like an explosion went off. Right, people would just you, it sold out Mississippi nights. They would just stare at that opening band. <laughs> but it, and I when Urge comes saying, out, when, when it Soul explodes. Asylum came out, it was they weren't bad, man. Right, I mean it was cool. Yeah, Local H was cool too, man. They sounded really good. And then uh, uh, when the Urge came out, it was like ooh, yeah, you know, yep, yeah. So Steve with us, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Um, so, so obviously Steve Ewing, uh, and then you got uh, hosting, ho- hosting. Hosting. There you go. Oh, in the Aztecs, hosting, yeah. Hosting in the Aztecs. Dude is oh. just mean on the keyboard. Hercules and the ancient Greeks. <laughs> and uh, like, uh, did you guys just meet through the the scene, kind of jamming together and no, stuff? We or, with or? Before. Yeah, we yeah, played with we them did. And I miss, uh, no, no, uh, Blueberry Hill. Yes, that's right. You played with the, the Blueberry Hill. Was that the Primus show? I think it was. Yeah. What's, well, what's Primus, the Primus, Primus oh, cover band? Jelly yeah. Kit from uh, Jelly Kit from Chicago. Chicago. So it was nice. it was Hostine and then us and then Jelly Kit playing. Like and like those guys are a that was a great pretty show. Damn fantastic Primus cover band. But uh, yeah. yeah, we played with Hostine then, and like man, it's. Weren't they a three piece, just drums, yeah. bass, mm-hmm. keyboard, and then dude on keyboard doing vocals, and it was just fuck. Just, he just kills it. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. Just I, I, high it, energy both, the whole time. Both just hands like, are are doing different shit, and then he's like <laughs> rapping, and it's like how we're, how are you human? How is that even? How do you do that? How how yeah. like 
It, it's, it's very it's, intricate. It's just rare you see a three piece fill up that much space and just yeah. keep everybody going. Just, just I remember, energy and just. Oh, I. Uh, I mean, I. I can't speak to them yet. I haven't got to see them live yet. So I'm excited about that. But um, there's a group called Greyhounds that I like a lot. Um, I've heard that name. Yeah, they're they're um, you know they've been around a long time as this as this lineup. But two of the guys I originally met playing with JJ Gray and Mofro. Nice and uh, Andrew nice. and. Um, uh, on the other guys Roger yeah. Steen. <laughs> uh, but anyway, they're uh, the play the keyboard player. Same kind of thing. He's he's playing two keys, and yeah. he's playing he's playing the lead and he's playing the bass parts. Yep. And the whole night, I'm like, man, there's like just killer bass lines going. Where are these coming? And then I realize it's all in the left hand, and he and he's and he's singing and so I, mean, I was just like, it was you do, you're doing three things at right. once Very, at the, yeah. at the yeah. end point. And it's like, right. you know, when you're playing guitar, like, yeah, you strum and you're doing shit up here, but it's not like as technical yeah. as that. Like, that's that's some shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was very impressive. There, there was a guy, uh, oh, me and Tim's old band, uh, uh, we played a show at the library with The Feed. And uh, The Feed was uh, David Grelly on yeah. keys and vocals. One of the baddest and things, Kevin, yeah, Kevin badass. something on drums who played yeah. with me and Bowers. Tim's old guitar player. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Bowers, and it was just them. Like they didn't. It was just a duo. They both sang leads, but the whole night, uh, David played. He, he like I think it was a Hammond or a Fender Rhodes. He had like a like a cool ass old school keyboard and a pedal board, and then a little tiny keyboard on top. And he just played the bass lines with his left hand and guitar soloed with his right hand and sang lead for like 70 percent of the night. Yeah, I mean it was it was one of the most impressive feats of musicianship I've ever seen. Right, and like that was that guy twelve years ago. Like I don't. Like I can't even imagine what he's doing now. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a force, man. He's he's a very talented man. He is. Uh, I miss that venue a lot, man. The the library was a cool space. I played uh, there. Yeah, it was a yeah. long time ago, but yeah. Yeah, it was a. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Like, it wasn't ideal as a concert venue, but it worked, and like it was cool to have a space like that to to uh, throw some shows and the, stuff so the, the load in and out was hard because right. you had those stairs yeah. but like it, it was a neat building uh the sound wasn't terrible the owners were great they, they, uh, it Angel, was right next to Sular Market wasn't it yeah 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 that was the, their whole thing is their competition was a social house and DBs right there in the same intersection uh that same couple uh owned uh Cruising Route 66 out on Watson, which did really well because there's no other venues out I forgot there. about that place, too. Played there. They, 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 they sold it and uh, uh, bought the library, and there's just so much competition down right. there. What are you going to do? You know, but Cruising, there was no competition. Right. But you got a medium crowd. What are you going to do? Me and Tim's old band, The Matter, our first show ever was at Cruising Route 66. And we followed them to the library. So when we had our CD release party for that band, uh, the library was, was our headquarters. We played there a bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I. Uh, that's kind of the thing. Like, I don't know. So it's, again, it's, it's kind of fun nostalgia, but... It, it's kind of sad at the same time when you get talking about all these great venues that are long My, gone now and stuff. The like, one that I miss the most, man, is the Red Sea. Yeah. Oh, that, that was a lot a good of good spot. times there. Yeah. When I first moved to St. Louis uh, 17 years ago, that's where I got my roots. Yep. I was Red living. Sea. I was living in Lake Lakeshire in South County, and then we moved up to uh, North County in the Vanita Park area. And I was going down to Red Sea every Monday night, man, just sitting in. That's how I got the Murder City. Dude, game. it was badass. <laughs> you, remember, you remember the guy, not going to say his name or mention the band, but where we almost met? You know who I'm talking about. Mm. You know who I'm talking Where we it's almost met cryptic. before the matter. I uh, When I met that guy oh, to, yeah. start, to start that band, yeah, yeah, yeah. was at an open mic night on a Monday yeah. night at the Red Sea. <laughs> 
That was totally. I like, know who you're talking. And about. it was all like yeah. spoken word jazz stuff. And I'm like, this yeah. guy gets up. The guy that took his shirt off all the time. And he took oh, his that's shirt. That's pretty off. cool. <laughs> I mean, hey, he does. He takes his shirt off better than I do. But when clubs go, go tell yeah. that guy to put his shirt yeah, on. When I'm the like, bartender well, comes up and says, "Go it, tell yeah. him to put his shirt back." No, no, it was the owner of the club. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> she yeah. came running up to me. Go tell him to put his shirt back on. Well, I don't thought do this was America. You know. <laughs> wild times but yeah, yeah that's so, where i where i met up with that guy at the so red that, sea so that's yeah. where you guys met bongo jack huh where did mm. <laughs> where do we meet where did jack where originally did bongo come in? i've known bongo for a little bit and I, I, put a, I saw I, jack play at an open mic night like out in the county like a million years ago uh, <laughs> where i was meeting a different dude for a cover band and jack and jesse was playing bass uh uh, well, but it was it was before I knew those you guys. Just, Bongo was used to saw. know. Uh, he used to jam with Callan O'Mara and yeah. Uh, yeah. another band. That's not a real person. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. And yeah. uh, it's actually, it's an I kind of just knew him through that through that, and just followed him on on the sure. socials. And I put a post up one day. I was like, ah, we could use some percussion, and he hit me up, and yeah. it just kind of worked out. Yeah, you just reposted that. Yeah, it was that. like yesterday. Yeah, it was like two was years it? ago. Yesterday. Yes. He's what a neat band. anniversary. I didn't even see that. And, yeah. and Bongo was like, bro. <laughs> yeah, Bongo, Bongo, Bongo was like, you need a hell of a lot more than just a percussionist. <laughs> and uh, he supplied all those other you things. Need <laughs> right? You need direction. Right? You need something. You need like an adult because you need help. <laughs> uh, Bongo Jack is definitely the most reliable adult in the band. Mm. Debatable. challenge me well how many times it, have you it, seen it, jack too fucked up to take care of a situation that guy is in charge uh i'm he, too fucked he, up to he, take a situation he, every day when they fuck up my lunch order at work he makes the set lists so he's, he's just got that guy. going for him. i'm just saying sorry shane uh, i was I, I was just trying to make a joke about that because you didn't name him and then you know, I just imagine Jack with a shirt off uh, doing jazz <laughs> at open mic stuff, you know, whatever. He probably does that. Yeah. I don't know. I've never been to <laughs> yeah, open right, mic right, with like, Jack. Right. <laughs> he might. He um, probably does. Yep. Jack's into some wild shit. You don't know. Yeah. Well, Jack, he's a crazy guy. When you bing bong that much, you know. It's yes. Cool. It's yeah. funny bing because bong, my, bing my bong. phone will auto correct his name. If I type in Bongo Jack, it comes out as Bingo Jake. <laughs> When he first jammed Bingo with us, he Jake. told us a story about he, he, uh, Bongo Jack tours around a lot. Like his his solo looper show is amazing, right. and he he's all over the place. Uh, but he told us a story about a bar. Like it was the first time he was there, and when he showed up, the names on the signs for the for the weekend bands had him as Bingo Jake instead of Bongo Jack and he had to go talk to somebody. So that that was the first time he came over. So all of us put him in as Bingo Jake on our phone. Nice. So it doesn't matter what he does. He's still Bingo Jake. Mm -hmm. How many uh, different ways have you guys uh, had Tree 1-4 misspelled? Uh... No. Not too often. It yeah. happens here and there. We just get the three. They yeah. just they think it's a typo or something. It's like oh yeah. three yeah. one four that or or they'll get them in the wrong order. They're like we get like it's a it's a plant and two numbers and you'll get like tree four one because they don't. But that's out of town people. Uh, in town people are like oh that's the area code. I These know, guys that's are pretty lame. Clever. Hmm. Yeah. Oh stupid jerks. But you go 50 miles away and then suddenly nobody understands uh how numbers work. But I don't know. The actual band name is Tree the Word. Mhm. 1 Yep. The Word. Very good. No, no. 4 The Word. Yeah. No. Yes. No, it's Tree the symbol, like you know, like when Prince did well, the, uh, yeah, uh, when, I, I feel like he made the symbol it, yeah. thing. You know, it, it's the tree, it's the and then it's a numeral one. No, an Arabic. The numeral. actual band name is T R E E. I don't think we have any art that backs up your argument. E space F O U R. It's it's Brad's band name. Yeah, it's Brad's band. Three one four. 
Oh my God. Boom. Holy shit, I'm wrong. No numerals. No actual number numbers. Is They're all yeah. words. <laughs> I'm mortified. Well, anytime I've tried to do it that way, you're like, oh, tree 14. I'm like, no, no not that one. No. Oh. Yeah. Great band, though. What are you guys tree like, 14. tree 11? <laughs> yeah, I know. You guys, man. tree 11? Oh, remember that? We can't talk. I love 311. No, 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 Don't no, get me no, wrong. No, but no, I'm just saying, no. 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 There's, there's no relation. Well, there's kind of a relation. <laughs> not really. Not really. Yeah. I mean, Our most 311-ish song I mean, what color does your not energy sound guys, a whole so lot like 311. Say what? So what color is your energy, guys? It's amber. <laughs> well, 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 amber is the green. color of my anal beads. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says, right? Because I'm totally down with that. <laughs> That's not the okay. Whatever, is whatever, color of whatever rain you want, beads. Yeah. Like, pl- play the song there and tell me again. I'm wrong. There it is again. Okay, that's my. Uh... <laughs> yep, there it is. <laughs> you, you can edit that out, right? No, we don't have that. <laughs> he ain't gonna. <laughs> yeah. He ain't gonna. Nah, we. Uh... I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is a that is a great game show though. What's what's the color of your anal beads? Uh, love that game show. This whole Alex, night, is us, that Alex us, Trebek. Yeah, us so. doing the Trebek? podcast is is brand on that old game show going no whammies, no whammies, and he's getting all whammies. <laughs> yeah, lots of whammies going on. <laughs> Trebek. So the album. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, well, again, uh, grab. Yeah, well, no, don't grab tickets. Just come out to the show because we we don't know about tickets. But if there were tickets, you could grab them. But we would just rather you show up day of the show and pay your ten dollar cover to come in and yeah. party with us. Ten dollar cover, yeah. And uh, that's again that's September eleventh, Saturday night. What uh, will we kicking things off around seven or eight or? Uh, that's a good question. I have some, all this stuff out, shouldn't I? Some, somewhere yeah. in there. See, yeah, here we go. Yeah, let me take a we gander. Uh, it's, it's, uh, hold on. Why are you looking at porn? <laughs> yeah. Meatspin.com. What? <laughs> meat, meat, oh. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> It's in here. I promise yeah, you, it's yeah. in here. It's right there, man. <laughs> it's right there. It's right there. We'll just say six. Six o'clock. Yeah, I camp out early. Uh, Doors at seven, show at eight. It's pretty normal. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, if we're just guessing, you know, yeah. whatever. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, uh, so. What what about afterwards? Are we uh, are you guys gonna? Um, we got some festival things, right? We're doing and yeah, uh, we got Mo Roots yeah coming up. Uh, that is the, uh, what, 17th? 17th? Yeah, yeah, seventeenth, seventeenth. We're terrible at this. <laughs> this is the sound of all yeah, of us 16th. getting out our phones. September sixteenth. Sixteenth. Where the hell's Jack when we need him? I know Jack's the guy for this. Our- I'm just really bad with dates. Where I have to put everything into a calendar. Or I'm I'm lost. <laughs> we need our band dad to. Um, yeah, man. Um, this one's for Mark, man. This is a. Uh, that's. Yeah, shout out to Mark. That's uh, super sad. <laughs> Missed that dude. Yeah. It was- <laughs> um, but yeah, come on out, Mo Roots. That's gonna be a great weekend down there, and. Uh, Shout out to Moonshine. <clears throat> yeah, a little white lightning there. You, you want another pull? Why not? Oh. Sure. We're, we're celebrating. It's not a boop this time? It's a pull now? Uh, I ran out of beer. It was, I thought it was a snort. I thought I had a beer. Where nah, we a snort more beer or a fridge. pull? There's got to be more beer in the fridge. This one. Well, Fucking loser. Fridge, oh, oh, just, oh, just makes me nauseous <laughs> looking it's at it. It's not even that bad. You don't need any more anyway. No, there, no, there no. Down. No, I'm good. I don't, it's not that bad. I don't even want to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's good. It's, it's good, good for you. What's tequila? Uh, it's like beer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably watered down. <clears throat> All right, I got a couple of... Um, oh. 
questions for you guys. All right, what do you got? Where were you the night of the 23rd? <laughs> All right, what's a song that always gets stuck in your head? Head Over Heels, Tears for Fears. It's one of my favorite songs. What's a song that always gets stuck in my head? <laughs> Usually it's there something I hate. And I wake up in the morning it's like and it's stuck gasoline. in my head, you know, like it is. some okay, random it is. pop tune. Since, since you asked that question, now I'm like, what song is stuck in my head? But I don't know what? if it's a song that always gets stuck in my head. What did you wake up singing this morning? I think I woke up snoring. Uh, he woke up and sang a dirge. You answer first. I don't have anything. Like, uh. It's just uh, usually I wake up in the morning for work uh, just, with some random song I don't like, something awful, like, and then I spend the first couple like hours of my Iowa day thing. trying to like rattle it out. You know, sometimes it's uh, when we did our last studio <laughs> session. Oh, yeah. I listened to the studio track so many times that I was waking up with that, and I would have to listen to. Uh, Something you know, that take, wasn't us. I know. take mine back. This morning I had Jerry was a race car driver stuck Hell in my yeah. head. Really? And uh, yeah, I blame Tony Hawk. Yeah. But I had it stuck oh, in my head and I had nice. to crank it on the way to work this morning. Nice. And listen to the song. So. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. I did the same uh, thing, dude. I, I, I heard part of a Bjork song <laughs> while I was driving to get my lunch. <laughs> And then that was the rest of the afternoon. Was just mm. going through her albums. So I have a bad habit of like hearing like a song, but then like the part that gets stuck in my head it will just be on a loop, and then I remix yeah. it, and then I like you know do some weird shit, and then like. Have you ever tried to recreate that? I have no musical talent, man. I don't. You can figure I, it out. But, Everybody's got musical. But like talent, I, man. I'll, I'll just start doing this weird shit in my brain, and then I'm like. Until I just go nuts, pretty much. So, like, uh, it happens. that's what happens, man. It just, yeah. I just, it, it's like you heard a little bit of Justin Bieber and you wake up in the morning and the only part you got is baby, 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 in a loop. And you know, I just got to think about something else. Right. And you're yeah. taking a shower, it's, you're putting on your clothes. If I don't play some music soon to get this out of my goddamn head. <laughs> It's well, called it's called an earworm. Right. Yes. yes. But then you just yeah. start doing babies over all the other songs you start playing. You <laughs> yeah, you just stick with it. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. I uh, let my, it roll. My, my key for that is is when you get that little chunk just in a loop, just sing a Beatles song, yep. whatever your favorite Beatles song is, and that will usually. But then you're stuck with that. But at least you're stuck with the Beatles. <laughs> right? mm. You're not just saying baby mm. over and over. Hmm. See, that's the thing. We're, we're all open to the power of suggestion, right? No, so I can maybe I can you sing, are a sheep. I, no, 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 no. Shut up. Sheeple. I can shut up. I can sing like half a melody from a chorus of any tune, and it's going to get stuck in your head whether you like it or not. And it's going to take you like 27 weeks to go, like, oh my God, it's from the God damn you know uh, wizard of oz he's been singing the first part of the melody to if i hit only had a brain and it's driving me nuts <laughs> uh, all right next question <laughs> all right uh the day comes along we have tree one four action figures mm -hmm. what would be your um your three accessories to go with your action figure that's a good question. Mm. For me, a Bush beer. Hell yeah! Um, Proud sponsor. Definitely, a, definitely a guitar, right? Or is that too obvious? I mean, well, I'll allow. You it. can't take any obvious stuff. No. So stuff that people don't know stuff that no. People what, what, whatever you about. think you would need, they expect you to want a guitar. A Bush beer. A Bush beer. Well, yeah. Um, the Whippet Cracker. <laughs> okay. Um, And I don't like a pocket knife. I don't know. That's all you need. What else do you need? Like a Swiss Army knife? It's just a it's knife. A knife. Oh, okay. I don't gold, need any of the other things. The golden no. fleece. No, you don't need to cut your fingernails while you're in no. battle. Oh, like, no. <laughs> I just imagine like Brad's action figure with like the little button on the back, like stab motion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's what, what do you oh got? Oh my god, Bongo Jack's little action figure would be like Big Bong. <laughs> too obvious. Yeah, too. But but it would yeah. be shooting out like throwing stars that's the his, whole time. That's his. Oh, it's got to be that. I've always told sure. him that he looks like the evil DJ from Zoolander. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. So Obey my dog. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wouldn't need anything. No. No. Nope. Just nope. Just plain old action. Um, I just put him to sleep. All right. <laughs> maybe we know what's going on. Maybe maybe a drumstick, maybe another drumstick, nope. and a big thumb. Just <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I was about to say. I was about. I was about to say. I'm scared. The, just I'm, I'm really anxious. <laughs> Put That's those away, I please. I just need the thumbs. Right, right. Jesus, the thumbs and. Uh, <laughs> I could break a clavicle with these stones. No, we know. It's very intimidating. <laughs> I shared that with a friend, the other, uh, Matt Boslow, the other day. Yeah. Uh, Just his thumbs? Well, no. Uh, they were <laughs> they were talking. That was like Look one of his. this picture of this guy's <laughs> yeah. thumbs. This is the weirdest she ever they, saw or what? He said that was like one of his biggest fears, like uh, having his clavicle broken like that or something like that. With Ooh. a thumb? No, but like. <laughs> but I shared that. Specifically yeah. with the thumb. <laughs> Wow! But I shared that clip from Rambo where he where he does that. Yeah, like, yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, with the thumbs, yeah. man. With dink, yeah. with the thumbs. <laughs> uh. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty good. It was pretty funny. Mm. So wow. Okay, so what about what's, you? What's yours, Paul? Oh, uh, what was the question again? I don't even know. If you were an action figure, what would be your uh, three things? Three that weapons you, of your choice. Accessories. The the one toy guy, and. Uh, all I can do is go. Uh, yeah, here we for, go. For, first of all, uh, strap in. Strap oh boy, in. Here we go. First of all, uh, uh, range of motion of the action figure would be very limited. <laughs> We're talking super basic shoulders, maybe some hips, like like a Star Wars action figure. Like, uh, definitely no no bending at the waist, no kung fu grip, no like like like. St- just bending just, at the elbow. You can you can jam an accessory in that little okay. yeah like maybe yeah bend at the elbow. Gotcha. Uh, so we're starting out with a, a really basic uh, non athletic action figure. Um, so you so need three, weapons. Three, uh, three no no weapons? Not, not, it's not weapons it's three accessories. Oh, okay. Three accessories. So one has to be a base. Too obvious. Clearly. Well, I had to say in like. My action figure would look weird. You would just have three bases. If it didn't come with them. Well, no, that's <laughs> Ben. Three bases. That's Ben Viber would have three bases. <laughs> <laughs> He'd come with a fourth one if he had like a mail order thing with some UPCs. <laughs> uh, be like base and like maybe some dice. Yeah, okay. You know, a lot of board yeah, games. Sure. Okay. Well, I don't know. Yeah. What's a, what's a cool ex- like like a laptop maybe? It's got to yeah. be internet porn. It's got to be the third <laughs> oh, one. It's yeah. the only thing that makes sense. That's the too obvious one. That's oh, where you missed your mark. Those like are your weapons here. of choice. Sure, it's not accessories okay. for your action. Are we talking weapons? Is it supposed to be weapons? I mean, because then I'll just take sure. three that, bases because you started, can murder right? a motherfucker <laughs> hitting them with the base. You know, like. <laughs> Uh, I like that as a uh, dice one. <laughs> yeah, they're like dice. The dice. Yeah. What? Dice. Right. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. It's a little combo dice and internet porn. You know, it's kind of sure. Whatever your hobbies are, yeah. you know, I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> Brad judges uh, a lot. Hand in the dice game. Yeah. Each his own. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. Nobody's listening to this by this point. Okay. So. No, that's sweet. Yeah. Everybody tuned out a long time ago. All right, right. All right. Um, okay. What about we have a uh, Tree One Four movie? Okay. Who would we like to see cast to play you guys in the movie version? Bradley Cooper, for me. Perfect. I don't know who that is. Who's oh. that? It's a guy from The Hangover. That's Rocket Raccoon, right? Um, e- easy question. Really easy. Billy Bob Jeff- Thornton. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Jeff Goldblum? Yes. Oh, my God. I think I, Billy Bob's got a no, better... I think no, Billy Bob, no, like... No. Uh, Fuck you. I like Billy Jeff Bob Goldblum. Or, you don't want to like hear it, but... Jeff Goldblum. It is what it is. Mm. 
I don't even. I've never. It's my question to answer. Yeah, well, Jeff Goldblum. I'm going to answer for Paul. I'm going to say Danny DeVito. <laughs> Danny DeVito. I, I like with tall shoes. <laughs> tall shoes. I, I I could see him pulling off my character, but being like six two is probably not going to work out for hey, him. Hey, we too got much. CGI, man. They CGI. You can stretch them out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, you're like that's You're my only wrong. complaint, really. Like that's great. All right, what about me Frank, What about Joe eat. and Jack? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, mm. Joe's only allowed to exist in the video world as the drawing that Brad made <laughs> with Brad doing Joe? the voice uh, no. that makes him New Zealandish. Let me think. <laughs> like about Like Joe's this. not allowed to have an actor because right. like of, he's uh, gonna he's actually gonna uh, do really well in the film industry. Uh, he's gonna lots of roles. He's gonna win. I some could awards, see him as Luke Wilson, but it's always gonna be him drawn in as but square not head Joe. Totally. And Brad I get doing the voice, but Joe gets all the credit. I all right. I, I like the Wilson. We we've come to an yes. agreement. Yeah. Yes. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Yeah. Sure. For Joe. Okay. Definitely. Wow. All right. So Jack. He's playing Jack though. Oh, that's tricky. Tommy Chong. Yeah, that could uh, be good. With dreads. I think I was thinking like uh, Johnny Depp from Pirates movie. Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> hey, right. that could work yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Captain yeah. Jack Sparrow. I could see that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fictitious. That's actually pretty right, good. Right. Yes. Yeah. You could see that. I'm I'm Boom. thinking like You're welcome, Hollywood. There it is. Oh, Boom. <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> ship it out. <laughs> <laughs> Next song. All right. Well, you can uh, join us again uh, September 11th. Hot Java. You can't. In Tower Grove area down there on Manchester. Yes, sir. And uh, you got Tree 14, Steve Ewing, and Hostine and the Aztecs. Right? Yes, sir. Boom. DJ Dub Pen. And DJ Dub Pen on the ones and twos. Uh, $10 to get you in. And it's going to be an incredible evening. So come on out, party, celebrate live local music. Uh, take home a copy of the brand new Tree One Four record, Exilorama. Hell yeah! Yes, yes, yes. Hell yeah! What? Well, this has been fun, dudes. I really appreciate you guys doing this. Um, you need more information? You can find Tree One Four on Facebook and Instagram, and follow along on uh, wherever you're getting your digital music at. You can uh, check out all the tunage there once the record's released. So. But yeah, I thank you guys for doing this, man. It's been a lot of fun tonight. Right, yeah, thank thanks you. for coming out. Right. right on. Bye, everybody. All right. Good Bye. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.